Welcome back to Unlocked, guys. I'm so excited for today because I have Colton Underwood on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. So you were The Bachelor, obviously. You were on The Bachelorette, weren't you? Yeah, but you knew me before all of that. I did. So let's not even pretend. So, no. So that's what I was going to go into that, <laughs> but I got to introduce you first. Okay. Yes. So... It's actually really funny, the story behind it, because we've never actually gotten to speak about this. No. And I think it's haven't. hilarious because I just have to say, when we met the first time, like, I knew you were gay. Like, <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. Like, that was the funny part about it. And, like, you can, Emily is sitting right here, which is hilarious, because Emily was my makeup artist at the time, one of my best friends. And, she was there, so... And I had I, my brother as my wingman. Yes, your brother was your wingman, and it was the ACM Awards. I forgot what year, but it was after... Was it after Luke? Yeah, so it was after Luke, Kennard, and I broke up, and I was like, all right, screw this. You know, you know how yeah. it goes. Like, you go through a breakup, and you're like... I was, tr I was off of a breakup, too. Yes. Like, coming off of a breakup, and... Yeah, I was just like, oh, why not? Let's let's go see. Yeah, let, like, let's go see. But then I remember there was, like, no connection there whatsoever. No, I mean, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Like, when I when I say it's it's not you, it's me, like, I truly mean that. And obviously, I proved that at this point. But, <laughs> yeah, it was still a fun weekend, though. I still had, like, we still had so much fun. Um, okay, I do have a confession, though. Oh, I have one, too. So, let, you go let's. You go first. Oh, mine's sort of fun. Well, you know how, like... I went to great lengths to make sure that there is no photos or proof yes. of that weekend because I wanted to stay out of the tabloids and media. Um, and I remember riding to the carpet with your dad. Yes. And he leaned over and he goes, at one point he goes, son, my daughter's not ready for a man like you. And I was <laughs> like, Todd, I'm not ready for your daughter either. But I, did, I didn't say that, but I just remember <laughs> him saying that to me. But I will say he has been so fun to have stay in my life and like shoot me a text and he's so optimistic and cheerful and been a great supporter which has been awesome I love that he really is like that's the dad I grew up with and I knew like no matter what happened yeah. in my life what I did like it that was the one constant I've had so that's really funny so oh god yours was a lot nicer confession than oh mine. no <laughs> Now I'm nervous. <laughs> Look at Emily. Emily's oh gosh. There. I'm like, oh, God. So I remember that night, and I was just like, you were so sweet. Like, obviously, you're hot as hell, but, like, there was just, like, no connection there. And I remember looking at Emily, and I was like, he's totally gay. She was like, no, he's not, Savannah. And then later that night, remember, I left and went back to my room. I was like, I'm really not feeling well. Like, I'm going to go back to my room. And you guys went and gambled. And then we came up to the room. Well, I really went to another hotel and hung out with all another my guy. friends. Oh, and another guy. Fun. Oh, okay. Guy. Great. N not offended at all. I would have done the same if I was in your position. The room service was great, though. Like we had, we ended up catching up at later at late night room service, and it was fun. It was great. So I just had to. I was like, "This is amazing." Yeah. But so, from how long was it after that that you went on The Bachelor? Oh gosh, everything in that time period is like a blur or yeah. like I just block out my traumas. Um, so I was, it was like in between football, I still had like my legal thing going on with one of the former teams I played with and I really didn't know what I was going to do. And so I like dipped my toe into a casting thing in Denver Okay. But it was for The Bachelor, so it was only women there. So I walk in, and I was like, am I in the right spot? Like, what's going on? And then before you knew it, I was, like, up in a room in front of a camera talking and interviewing for this thing. And, like, two weeks later, they're, like, calling me for follow-ups. And it happened very fast. Yeah. Um, and I was also excited. Like, I, I has always been a fan of entertainment and reality shows, and then all of a sudden I'm on one. And then next thing you know, I filmed three reality shows in one year, and I become like sort of my identity goes from football player to reality television yeah. star. And I was running from my sexuality. So I was happy that my identity was tied into something other than people mm -hmm. questioning me about that. For sure. So it was just a very, very fast, fast year. Were there ever any questions like during your football career of your sexuality? Oh, yes. I mean, not like nothing that like was inappropriate or a, a relationship, but like there was a lot of moments that I'm like, why me? 
Yeah. Like, why do, why does this have to be my deck of cards or my cards that were dealt to me yeah. and dealing with locker rooms because it's not the most friendly place for a gay man to be just with jokes and banter and yeah. Like it was never directed towards you, but you knew in your, like your own identity and what you were struggling with. Yeah. Like they, no one knew you were gay. No, I feel outside of our situation. I feel like I hit it pretty well. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think, I think in the locker room, I did a much, much better job. I'm not proud of it because like that means laughing at jokes that were at my community's expense and like contributing and being a part of the problem instead of the answer. And I think that's Mm. why now I'm so dedicated in trying to right those wrongs. But, um, yeah, I just really sort of hit it and, and. I think like a lot of people were confused when I came out of why I did what I did and why I dated so publicly. And it's like, I just truly believed the more that I dated women and the further that I got along with them, the straighter I would become. Like that's just sort of what I told myself and I committed to it and emotions were still very real. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when I was in a relationship with a, with a woman, I was in it. It it was still like a, an emotional connection. Um, so you did have the ability to feel that, but was it like when things became sexual that you were like, I'm not, or could you still like um, my gay best friends, like man, I've slept with more women than I have men. Like, I don't want to confuse the audience and like get people like, but I do believe there's a scale and I'm not like, I identify as a gay man, but like there's that scale, right. Of like where, and I know people who are like, obviously bi, it could be 50, 50, you know, 60, 40, like there's splits. I don't want to give a number because I don't want that to be headlines (laughs) over anything else, but like (laughs) my number is not a hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I get that. But so when you were doing the bachelor was, okay. Were you, I can't remember, were you on the bachelorette and then became the bachelor? Yeah. So I did bachelorette, bachelor in paradise and then bachelor. So who was the bachelorette? Your season? Um, Becca. Okay, it was Becca. Yes. And yes. how far did you make it to that? It was towards the end, right? I was in the final four. I got sent home right before hometowns. Okay. Was that Which a was... blessing? Well, yes. Now, I just like, I got wrapped into like, I just, I love the entertainment aspect you, of the world. It's easy to get wrapped up. So I was like, oh, way. for sure. I'm making it to hometowns. They need my story. Like they're leaning into my virginity really heavily. Like they'll play this out. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, wh- what, what now? And they're like, you have to go to paradise. And I was like, Ugh. oh, I couldn't think of like a worse situation. Yeah. And then you became the bachelor. Now was, okay. Was the, you being a virgin, was that a real narrative or was that a kind of cover for you and your sexuality? No, it was a real narrative that I actually honestly did not want out because like okay. then it, it started giving people, they were poking holes and asking questions that I didn't want to have to answer. Like yeah. I think the general fan base and population of the bachelor franchise was confused why I was a virgin because like I gave sort of mixed answers because I didn't like, I would be like, it's, I'm a man of faith and I'm saving myself, but then I'm not saving myself. And, uh, the right woman hasn't come on along yet. And yeah. like all these random excuses that were making sense to nobody. And I didn't want to have to keep talking about my virginity, yeah. but it was very much at that time, as you can tell, you hung out with me in Vegas. So you knew <laughs> I was not making any moves. There was nothing. And I also, there, there was I'm also working with the right tools, guys. <laughs> there was also a part of me that like did not I think conscious wise did not want to go there with a woman when I was still questioning my sexuality. That's what I was going to ask. Was that kind of, it was taken. Yes. You are obviously a Christian and that is your faith, but did you take it as like a way that that protected you? Because by being a virgin, you just, that's what it is. You just don't have sex before marriage, but really that protected you from having to really come to the realization or explain to people like, okay, I'm really into this and not that. Yeah. I mean, I I will fully admit I hid behind my faith and I think a lot of people hide behind their faith and they're hypocritical and judgmental and all these things that you're not supposed to be when you're a Christian, but I definitely hid behind my faith. Mm -hmm. And at times I, I truly believed praying to God, making me to make me straighter was the answer. And it was work. It was going to work. And then all of a sudden I get cast to be on the bachelorette and I'm like, thank you for answering my prayers. Like this is such a strong opportunity for me to become straight. And then all of a sudden I became the bachelor and I'm like, Oh, that's really happening now. (laughs) I'm really going to be straight. I'm becoming straighter. Like I can feel it. And yeah. And when did it finally hit you that like, Holy shit, what am I doing? Um, I really had in the pandemic a super spiral. 
Yeah. A really, really bad. I don't even want to call it a weekend or a week. It was a, a really bad stretch of two months that were yeah. really hard. Um, I think the pandemic was hard on everyone, but especially you coming off of, because what yeah. did the, that season of the bachelor, when did it air? In 2019. So, so that was right when the pandemic was starting. Yeah. Well, it was, yeah, towards the end and I had a book coming out and then like, I remember like my book tour got canceled because of the pandemic. And then it just basically running from myself had to stop at the pandemic because then all of a sudden everything shut down. I wasn't filming any more TV shows. I couldn't go write another book. I couldn't throw my identity or like run to something else. I had to like, you had to, I had to stop and sit with it and it was yeah. so uncomfortable and I was really fucking up like mm. in a lot of areas in my life and making mistakes and lashing out and acting. I was truly going crazy. Self-destruction. I was truly going crazy. It was, it was not a healthy situation for me. Wow. Yeah. And so were, when you were on the bachelor and you were filming that were was there ever a time that you were like, what the hell am I doing? Of course. But like, how is The Bachelor, the lead of the franchise, supposed to say I'm questioning my sexuality to America? Did like, that's not a popular thing to do. Did you ever say it to any producers, any? No, that was a secret. I, I, that was a secret I thought I was going to die with. Like, there was no wow. way that I was going to ever let them get that out of me. Wow. Um, I have, you know... Even before the, even before and during The Bachelor, I've had five therapists that never got I was gay. Like, they, they wow. never. Wow. So it took, and even post-Bachelor, it took two more different therapists to, like, finally, and it was a gay man himself who I finally confided in. But, like, it, yeah, it never happened. Like, and so when you were on The Bachelor and you had, like, these overnight dates, mm -hmm. how was that? Um... <laughs> I got in trouble. Like it became a media thing last time I talked about one of them, but like, like I tried to be for detail. No, right, right, right. I tried to be respectful. I mean, as you can imagine, <laughs> and you got a little glimpse into my world, <laughs> they were not super comfortable. I don't, I was trying to really, it was, I was so torn. Like, do I, don't I, am I being disrespectful to the woman? Am I being disrespectful to myself? Should I give this a shot? Should I not? Um, and then on the bachelor, specifically for fantasy suite dates. Like I had at that point already sort of had my mind made up mm -hmm. um, and knew where I was going and what I was pursuing. So it just felt disingenuine. And, yeah. and that was the hard part for me because I, I remember having to weigh, oh, I want to make a good TV show. I want this to have good ratings. I want to do well for the ABC network. I want to really make this something, this show something I'm proud of. Yeah. That was sort of my identity, right? Because it is a business thing. It, it, it is. And I think like that's why I ended up getting cast for it because I said, I'm going to make a good TV show for you guys. Like, yeah. and like, I think they respected that versus somebody coming in and being like, I'm here for love. And it's like, yeah. No, like okay. I'm here for business as well. Right. So I was like, let's, let's do it. Let's work together and here are my conditions, you know, and it, it worked out and I don't, yeah, I mean, it was and challenging. So if you've been a fan of my family, then you know we are suckers for family game night. And I have really tried to be intentional with Chloe and Grayson and keep this going. That's where KiwiCo has come into play. KiwiCo is defining the future of play by making it engaging, enriching, and seriously fun. Each month, KiwiCo delivers crates packed with fun and it helps to spark creativity with kid-friendly topics and activities. For us, we absolutely love the yummy crate. The yummy crate helps to unlock the science of cooking and help your kids gain confidence in the kitchen. With these family-friendly, kid-tested, and kid-tasted recipes and activities, they can experience the joy of preparing and sharing a meal. I absolutely love this because they have a STEM-based approach, and it is designed to foster a love for the true science of cooking with delicious recipes and in enriching activities. Learning has never tasted so good. So I hope that you guys jump on board with me on this journey because I'm learning as a bonus parent, it can be hard to find creative ways to keep your children busy, challenged, and off their screens. KiwiCo does the legwork for you so you can spend quality time tackling projects together. I promise you, your kids, your siblings, they will be so excited the day the box arrives because it is ours. 
So redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence and problem-solving skills with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash unlocked. That's 50% off your first month at kiwi.com slash unlocked. K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash unlocked. Y'all know I've been on a health kick recently. I mean, I jump on and jump off the train quite often, but right now I'm on and I'm obsessed with mud water. Also, before I get into mud water, y'all, they've got a lot of big words in here and some things that just people from the South cannot say properly. So just bear with me. But mud water is a coffee alternative with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. Mud water has only a fraction of caffeine that a cup of coffee does. You get energy without the jitters or the crash of coffee, which none of us enjoy. Each ingredient also was added for a purpose. Cacao and chai for mood and a hint of caffeine. Lion's mane to support focus. Cordyceps to help support physical performance. Chaga and reishi. Y'all. And cinnamon for antioxidants. The taste is absolutely amazing. My favorite flavor is matcha because I get the focus and energy that I need in life right now because let's face it, life is hard and we all need a little help sometime. I personally like to drink mine with oat milk. It's just what works best for me. Mud is Whole30 approved, 100% USDA organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, and kosher certified. Mudwater donates monthly to the Berkeley Center for the Science of Psychedelics as Mudwater believes that the country is in a mental health epidemic and sees psychedelics as useful tools for individuals with depression, PTSD, anxiety, and other mental health experiences. So go to mudwater.com to support the show and use code UNLOCKED for 15% off. That's mud, M-U-D, WTR.com slash unlocked and use code unlocked for 15% off. What would you say is, do you regret being the bachelor? Oh yeah. I mean, I could regret so many different things in my lives, but I would say as much back and forth and things that have been said about me talking about the franchise, like I'm super grateful to them Yeah, because it gave you a, I could either be, Closeted and in marriage, or closeted and miserable and married, possibly, or dead. I mean, those are my, unfortunately, my my two truths of what my life sort of was projected to go. And then the Bachelor franchise happened, and I couldn't run from it anymore. And I sort of got lost, and it was a challenging time. And I was forced to confront a lot of demons that I was holding on to. Wow. So yeah. you did struggle with. There had to have been a point where you were in such a deep depression. Oh, for sure. I mean, I had anxiety, paranoia, depression. I mean, you name a lot of different things yeah. going on, and I probably checked a lot of those boxes. Mm -hmm. And I've what was even harder is, like, I had to do a lot of that alone because <laughs> I couldn't let anybody in. Um, I think, the you know, the first person that I told was my publicist because there was, like... He's this blackmail email and a, that's know. what that's where I was going to go next. Was there a yeah. moment that you were forced into telling your story before you were ready? Yeah. I mean, there was an there was an email that came to my foundation page. I remember claiming that they had photos of me um, alluding to the fact that I was gay and I was not ready. I was actually towards the bottom of my spiral, like still using medications and pro and I remember having to call my, I called my publicist and I lied to him immediately. I was like, they're not me, but I don't know. I'm going to forward you the email, take care of it. Like, that's truly what I said. And then things started happening. Media started picking some things up. I had to go back home and get help. And I gave, I remember like the moment I like went back, gave my dad my medications, moved back in with him, um, wow. went and got checked into, you know, see a therapist and a psychologist and took care of finally like took care of myself. And even in those moments, I didn't come out like the, like even at like the moments where people are questioning, 
why are you doing this? I still wasn't coming out to people. And then finally my publicist called me back. I think it was like a month or two later after that and just said, what's going on? And I just remember feeling, you know, safe enough to just say, and he's, and he's like, you don't have to answer this, but I'm gonna ask you a question. Are you gay? And I was like, yes. And for whatever reason, that was like the first time that I ever said it. Wow. So, and did you feel a sense of like, like weight just lifted off of you when you said yes. Oh, immediately. And then even when we hung up the phone, I like text him and I was like, please don't tell anybody. Like, you know, I was paranoid still. I was like, I don't like, yeah. I don't know what to do. Like, how does this work? Like, yeah. what, there's no roadmap here. I, I don't, you know, anything that was gay and around me and growing up or queer, I ran from. I didn't look in the direction. I didn't want to be educated on it. I didn't want to even be tempted yeah. to be gay. Wow. And see, and that's the sad part is because, so right before you came, Lance Bass was on. Mm -hmm. And so Lance was telling me about when he first came out as being gay, he was at like in this city that was like, I guess a big gay community. And he was at a club and he was standing in line at the bathroom. And he said, and this guy was like, oh my God, you're Lance Bass. And he was like, yeah. And the guy was like, wait, I didn't know you were gay. And Lance was like, yeah, I am. And it was a reporter oh. that he told it to. Mm -hmm. And then from that moment, like tabloid started like calling his publicist. And then he finally put it out on the cover of people that he was gay, yeah. but it was before he was ever ready to come out. Yeah. And so when obviously these articles started coming out, what was the big moment that you were like, I'm gay to the world? I think the biggest thing for me, like, like, how did you come out to everyone? Not that you well, ever should have to. Yeah. My, <laughs> yeah, my, so my situation was complicated for many reasons, but I was working with a production company on another TV project that was led by two gay men. Was that the Netflix special? Yeah. Okay. They're the production company who ended up doing my Netflix show, but this was a completely different show that we were working on and we were already filming some things and the blackmail email came in. I approached him and said, hey, I'm not healthy. I'm taking some steps back. I'm going to go back in Colorado. So all of that's going on. They called me and they're like, hey, we have enough pieces of the puzzle to put together what's going on here. And we just want you to know we're here to support you. Mm. And if you ever want to revisit working together, like I would love to revisit it with you. And I didn't think too much of it. I was like, primarily focused on getting healthy yeah. and I was back in Colorado. So I wasn't even in LA to meet with them. And then I had to come back out here for something and ended up meeting with them. And then they basically were like, would you like to help people? And like, doc, would you be comfortable documenting this? And at first I said, I didn't think it was right. I didn't know I was not ready. And then time went by and it was sort of a yes thing. And then the more I talked with the, spoke with the production company, I decided to come out on Good Morning America, more public because okay. I I just didn't want. I, I remember that it was yeah. that morning on Good Morning America, and, and remember him? I think I sent you the link or something, and I was like, I literally sent it to her. I was like, told you so. Yeah, <laughs> I know you're right. Um, I love you. It took it took a while to get there, but that's awesome though. Did you feel but, that moment? You had to have been so. Nervous. By that Coming time, from your football background, Christian background, yeah, because Christians, I say, can be the worst when it comes to a topic like this. Totally. Um, I was excited for that. I think at that point, I had already come out to my family. I had already come out to my close friends, uh, and I wanted to make sure that the the news was getting out from me and not from tabloids and people so and you can tell your own story yeah and I know a lot of people had to you know had a lot to say of why I was doing it so publicly but it's like if you had been through what I had gone through the last year of having tabloids and these nasty headlines written about me I think a lot of people would have done the same thing of being want to tell their own story and like the truth of yeah. it versus like letting them put pieces together and make things up. And what would you say to the people? Cause I remember that was a big thing. I think when you came out the Netflix series, all of that, people saying that you were trying to just profit off of other people's hurt from the bachelor and like you're profiting while other people are hurting. Yeah. I mean, that was, I, I didn't even think about that perspective yeah. to be honest with you. I was just sort of going along and filming and, and truly and with my intentions of being like, this can help a lot of young people in 
middle America. Yeah. I mean, there is zero representation in our sports culture. I shouldn't say zero, but there's very few representations of the queer community in in sports and, and having that background. And I just thought that it was a thing that could help people. Um, and I also like, I I got to a point where I was humble and took a step back and said, okay, they have a point. I see what they mean. I haven't put any work in. I just sort of came out and, but I felt like I was like the new kid on playground that was like so excited to be there and nobody wanted to play with me. You know, I came out and I was like, finally I can be free. And then all of a sudden it's like all these queer publications were calling me garbage and, and net didn't have nice things to say. And I'm just like, Oh, this is not fun either. <laughs> like, what wow. do I do? So, and why were they? Why was that perspective? Was that their perspective because they thought you were trying to profit off of it, or? I think it was a mix. I, I, I get why people like don't understand me, or like they think I'm a walking contradiction. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm a living but walking I think, mess. I like think that has to do with people pleasing, though. Oh, for sure. Because you're such a people pleaser that you want to, you never want to hurt anyone. Totally. But in the process, you hurt everyone, including yourself, because you're not staying true and authentic to truly what makes you happy. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's, that's a lot to do with a lot of it is I try to make sure everybody's happy with all of the decisions that I'm making, even if I'm not happy with them, Mm -hmm. because it's like, this is what's better for everybody else. And then it's like, well you know, for the first time, you know, I took all of last year pretty much off professionally and I was just like, I wanted to sit with like what's healthy and what's good for me. Yeah. And now I have a little bit more clarity for. That's amazing. Yeah. Though. That's amazing. And so to the people, have you gotten to the point like in your process to where you have apologized to people that maybe you hurt along the way that were just kind of a product of so they just happened to get destroyed in the midst of you finding yourself. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I've ever like publicly come out and made it a big deal. I think I've more so, I more so want my actions to speak louder than any apology or any, like anything that I can say to the mass people who had a problem with me or had still do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm getting down to like the root of why I made the mistakes that I made and why I went down the path that I went. And I'm trying to give back to mental health reform in DC and protect college athletes and create a safe space. I really view myself as a bridge to the conservative community. I feel Mm -hmm. like that is something that I'm really trying to take on and and find pride and ownership in right now is, um, I feel like I can hopefully be disarming when it comes to conversations that, um, a lot of people that are comfortable with that are conservative or Republican do not know how to ask or approach and they're a little off putted by. And I feel like I want to serve as that bridge because I really want to understand what their thought process is so that I can help educate and just like show that there's a community of people that, um, are not harmful at all. And if anything, yeah. just want to live their life in peace and not have you up in their business. <laughs> exactly. I think, I think that's to answer your question. I I'm more than happy to say, you know, I'm so sorry to all those people, but I think there's a lot of actions that I can do first and foremost that would yeah. prove that versus any lip service that I can give. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Cause actions speak louder than words. Yeah. And too, so you spoke about what you're doing with mental health because mental health was a huge thing for you. Yeah, it was. And that's a whole, been a whole journey still ongoing yeah, and it's still, always it. still a work in progress. And I mean, I know this is, you're interviewing me, but I would like no, to also no. give you a lot of credit too, because it's been awesome to watch you as a sister and mm. to support your family as humbly and just as classy as you have, because yeah. as someone who's been in the circuit of the media before and had stories and headlines that weren't completely true out yeah. there, um, it's hard. It's difficult. And I think you've done a really good job and I Thank love you. watching you be an older sister. You're incredible. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, obviously your relationship with Chase is, is complicated, but also <laughs> entertaining. Yeah, um, very much but so. And your family has always been so good to me. And I, I also wanted to say that too, is like the text messages from Todd when there was, I think some random headline, he said, he didn't even say anything. He's like, are you okay? He truly mm-hmm. just texted me and was like, are you okay? And I was like, Thanks for checking in. Like this is, I was not expecting your name to pop up. Don't realize how much a text message like that goes when you're just at the bottom of the bottom. And like I've had when everything started coming out about my family and the harsh headlines, I was like, these people have no idea. And then I would get a text message from someone that was just like, 
you don't have to respond. Just know that like, I love you and I'm thinking about you. Yeah. And you have no idea like that when it comes at the perfect time, it could literally save someone's life. Totally. Yeah. It, and, and also it could give them hope that like, it's not all doom and gloom. And mm. I think that's a, an important perspective that I always keep in mind when people ask me how X, Y, or Z or whatever celebrity is. I'm like, yeah. that person has always treated me with kindness, love, and support. And like, that's all I can say. Like, say whatever, like, say whatever you want to say, say, say whatever you want to say. Here's what I'm going to say is the Chrisley family has been very, very nice and supportive and lovely that's to awesome. me. And even my brother, I re- like Connor, I love Connor you. loves y'all him. too. Like Co- Connor had such a fun weekend. I love Connor. How, you guys probably had more chemistry than, than yeah, I did with you. Real. And he's, he was married at the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's amazing. Yeah. He is really, he's like the sweetest human being. I know he married his high school sweetheart. He loves his like. Like, he just is a very private, he just thinks everything I do is so silly and not work. And like, <laughs> he loves to say, I don't have a job. And I'm just like, great. That's fun. amazing. But what you're doing now though, is yep. truly making a difference. Cause you were just in Washington DC. Yeah. And can you explain that initiative a little bit? Yeah. So we introduced a bill, um, to members of Congress and to some senators called the teams act. It's targeting emotional and mental stability. Wow. Um, so we're going to be hopefully taking that bill out, uh, right now and it's a bipartisan issue that both parties have agreed on which is which is really cool to That's see awesome um but basically it's a grant program to allow these student athletes at university access to resources and care for their mental health just mm-hmm. like somebody who goes out there on a saturday tears their acl on the football field has a surgery and a game plan put together i want that same care and i want that same effort and focus on somebody who walks into their coach and says i have anxiety i have an eating disorder i have depression i have something that Mm -hmm. is invisible to you but it's really affecting me to the point of suicide and i think that's my mission right now is to help people and and also give back to like that sport community and also my queer community who struggles in those locker rooms yeah and to normalize that it's okay to not be okay and normally and it's my therapist said it best she was like savannah she was like depression doesn't look the same for Mm -hmm. everyone some people lay in bed all the time some people can't get up some people cry some people get angry she was like you are just very high functioning she was like there's high functioning depression to where no one would ever know but when you're by yourself it all hits And especially during COVID, the amount of high functioning people that, you know, started committing suicide, attempted suicide, literally my therapist was like, I've had doctors, lawyers, athletes, all these people that have tried committing suicide. And it's just looked upon like, oh, you're successful. You've got a great career. You've got no reason to be depressed. Right. And these athletes, I mean, you're seeing more and more of it committing suicide that, you would have never known, but maybe they just didn't have a safe place to go to. Yeah. I think what, so I took a group of athletes with me to DC this last time just to share their stories with, with Congress. And, um, you know, one of them put it so beautifully and I'm going to probably butcher it, but she just said so many people are suffering in silence that I'm willing to be loud about my history because it can save at least one life. Mm. And I think like that's the truth right now is there's so many people suffering silently, whether it's in regards to addiction or their sexuality or being judged. We, you know, I don't think our human brain was built to scroll all day and see other people's lives no. and hear other people's opinions. So now we have to like fix that. Like yeah. there's like pros and cons, right? Like I, I love the fact that I can get a lot of work done on my phone, but at the same time when that work is being done at nine thirty at night or, you know, you're laying in bed and you let people into your bedroom to judge you like not, physically, but But you know, it's such a real, so like those are habits that me and my partner are working on too, is like when we wake up, we don't want to like scroll first thing in the morning. We don't, we keep our phone on airplane mode in the bedroom now, like, cause we don't want the world in our, in our space. Like that is, that is our space and it's for nobody else to enter. So then we start our day outside of the bedroom. So yeah, yeah. that is awesome. I love that. Healthy habits. Exactly. Healthy habits. And too, I have to say like hearing you speak, it truly is such a motivation to me. And it's, It's like, you know, when you get those signs from God, that's like, all right, you're on the right path Yeah. and just hearing you and how far you've come. And the fact that you were just in front of Congress is such a huge thing because that's how I've been about what's going on with my family. Like if I can, I'm willing to be as loud as I can possibly be. If it means 
making one person's life better. If yeah. it means the people in our system that are being raped and abused by people of power, if it means saving those people, then mm -hmm. I've done something right. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's important to just my two cents on it for you is like totally realizing it might not benefit your situation, your family or mm -hmm. your, the outcome of what's going on in your life right now. But your intent was never that your intent is to help a group of people in the future. And I think yeah. like, as long as you remain true to those, those goals and those missions. And then also for me too, like I realized this in my last year, like I'm going to fall short at times of my goals. I'm going to fall short of like what I want and who I want to be. Yeah. But like, instead of letting that take me back, I learn from it and try to strap back on and go again. Exactly. Well, and that's how I kind of look at it is like, I know my mother and father are sitting in federal prisons but, and I also know how they're treated and the mistreatment and just the conditions as a whole. And I mm. think to myself, how many other mothers, fathers, daughters, sons are sitting in those same facilities that no one has a platform to be able to speak up and speak against it or people yeah. that are afraid to do it. And for me, I'm like, you know what, regardless of whether this changes my parents' situation or not, if I can save another child from feeling how I've been made to feel, yeah, then it's all worth it. Well, good for you. And you're doing it with such leadership. And like I said before, it's been really, if there's any silver lining, it's watching you be the best sister you can be and best family member you can be to your family. Cause you're really like, I, I just, I feel like since watching you on TV and then also like getting to know your family, like you guys are glue. Oh, we and are. You're all up in each other's business, whether it's good or bad. <laughs> yes. So like it should be no different in this case. And yeah. like, it's fun and exciting and motivating also for me to watch you fight like hell for your family. Cause I think that is a really important thing for people out there to see. Yeah. Like fight for the people you love. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter the people on the outside that are like, Oh, maybe you shouldn't do this for business that no, right. screw you. Right. When it comes to my family, like I don't care how it affects my business. I don't care. Right. Cause I stand by what's right. Yeah. Yep. And that's really where I'm at is like, I don't put all political things aside, stand by what's right. Totally. And you know, you can have a clean conscience. Yeah. Support for today's episode of Unlocked comes from Honey Love. The reviews are in. Honey Love came out on top for the best wedding day shapewear. With wedding season upon us, this is an ad you've been waiting for. Whether you're a bride or a guest like me, always, or looking for an everyday fit, Honey Love is your go-to for all things shapewear. Honey Love has revolutionized compression technology so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating while wearing effective shapewear. You'll immediately feel and see the difference. I am a obsessed with Honey Love. We all know how uncomfortable shapewear can be, but Honey Love has totally changed the game. Wearing Honey Love has made me feel so confident and comfortable. Honey Love's best-selling superpower short is literally my go-to. It has targeted compression technology that distinguishes between areas where you want more support and areas you need less compression. I hope you guys love Honey Love just as much as I do. You'll immediately feel and see the difference. We also have an exclusive offer just for my listeners. Get 20% off your entire order with code unlocked20 at honeylove.com. Support our show and check them out at honeylove.com and use code unlocked20. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by BetterHelp. You guys know I've talked about BetterHelp before on the podcast, and I'm absolutely obsessed. I am a huge advocate for therapy, and BetterHelp makes it so much easier. We all know that getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Right now, my life is throwing curveball after curveball after curveball. Thankfully, therapy has helped me in that process. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things, which has been a challenge for me. Talking through things has not always been my strong suit, but I've come to realize that it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to ask for help. And that's where BetterHelp helps to connect you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self discovery 
discovery from wherever you are. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash savannah today to get 10% off your first month. Again, visit betterhelp.com slash savannah today to get 10% off your first month. And so, okay, so we've talked about kind of your where you were at in like a darker place in life. And now I love following you and seeing all the happy things that you post. Yeah. I think it's amazing. So you are engaged. I am. Yes. And how does it feel? It's incredible. Like, it's been truly the best. I think we're going on two years now. I lost track of time. I can't say that about a lot of things of the last few years. Like yeah. it's, it's been magical. And I, I'm obviously, I was in a very privileged and lucky position to be able to truly take a year to where I can work on myself and my relationship and mm-hmm. give all of that, the energy and focus that it needs. But I just feel like I'm, he makes me the best version of myself. Aww. I'm the most authentic version of myself I learned more about what love is and like what it should be and yeah it sounds so corny but like when I met him like I knew immediately and I was like oh this is this is it like, like there is, is no supposed to feel. there is no grass is greener there is no like approach where I like want to be everybody and their mom was telling me to go play the field like download the apps go hook up like go have a good time And I'm just like, I have an incredible man in front of me who's like everything that I, if I like was to write out on paper what I wanted, it's him. Why would I go do that? You know? And like, I I like to say, I was like, even when I was straight, that was never my MO either. Yeah. As you found out. So I was like, you know, that's, that's my whole thing is like, I was never, that's not how I date. And also if I could take anything from the Bachelor franchise, I dated with intent. Every single time I dated. And, like, that's what I'm always grateful to them for, too, is they, like, truly weirdly taught me how to, like, go on a date and connect and communicate with someone without distractions. Yeah. And so what is – what's the age difference between you two? He likes to say nine months and – or nine years and two months. Okay. I just say ten years. (laughs) I just say ten years. Um, See, but that's great, though, also because – with everything that you've been through, like, I mean, heck, like, I, I say it all the time. I like older men. So, 10 years, same. Now, nothing. We're on the same oh, page I'm there. On the same page. Ooh. Oh, thank God. But you also are, I will, like, you're mature for your age. You yeah. had to grow, you had to grow up quicker than most. Yes, exactly. And so, for that, I'm like, I need someone who, who can have a tough conversation, who has been through trauma. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but if you've got a dollhouse life, I don't want you. I, it's it's boring too. <laughs> it is because yeah. I like to have those tough, in depth conversations, and I want someone who knows more than I know. Yeah, <laughs> such a good point. Yeah. Like I want someone smarter than me. I want That's someone. It, yeah, you want a teammate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, what would you say? Was was that like at first? Was it like whoa, he's ten years older, or did you? Oh love no! Him? Like, I mean, the, and it's so funny because like you come out and. The LGBTQ plus community is always like, no labels. Like, come out. And like, the first thing they did when I came out was like, what's your type? Daddies? Like, and they immediately labeled like the category that I like. So I was like, sure. sure. Um, just to please everybody here, daddies is my type. Yes, um, daddies. And I found the daddiest of them all. See, look, um, we're like, we're more similar than we think. Totally. Yes. This is, this is, we're more, more meant to be like best friends than we were dating. Exactly. Um, but yeah. So oh. <laughs> Emily said it. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's it's a really good match, and I feel like yeah, I'm an old soul. So like, mm-hmm. we connect on like a deeper level. See, and that's the thing. I'm like, when you have that emotional connection, there's nothing in the world that can top that. Totally. Nothing. Like, and for me, I don't know if it's because like all the trauma in my life, but. I have to be emotionally connected to you to be physically connected to you. Yeah. Like it does. You could be the hottest person in the world, but if something emotionally is not clicking, I can't get there with you. Can't fake it. No. Uh, I, yeah, I know that with you. You uh, can't <laughs> fake it. Can I ask what your status is right now? <laughs> you cannot fake it. It's amazing. I am dating someone. Oh, congrats. Yeah. Good. So, and you're I mean, not faking not, it. You're happy. I'm not faking it. I'm not a lesbian. Great. 
Okay. I'm, you know, no, no bones about no, it. No shit if you were. No, I, hey, you know, sometimes I've thought maybe it would be easier, but. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can vouch it's way easier being gay. I okay. love it. Okay. I Who knows? Who knows? No. Um, well, I'm happy for you. Good. Yeah. So, you know, it's just right now, like, you know, I got two kids tagging along with me. So. Yeah. It's, Take your time. You Be patient. And it's not public then, right? No, not okay. really. But. Keep my, keep it to yourself. That's yeah. what we did until we got outed. See, don't you but. think though, like, okay, let me ask you that. Do when it comes to like part of me, that's what I struggle with is like for the next relationship. I'm like, I want to keep it as private as possible until literally like I get engaged and then here you go. Yeah. And I would say that is the healthiest and best thing you can do, but also be prepared for the noise that my problem before I finish that thought, my problem with reality TV is when I came out and people gave me their opinions is like, they're like, this comes with the territory of being a reality star. I was like, I didn't so sign human. up. I didn't sign up to be harassed or bullied or like, f- like two years after the show that I did. Like, I get it that I like yes. it worked in that moment, but like, this isn't cute now. So that's where I stand with it. But I will say, like, what makes Jordan the best partner for me is he's very, very good at communicating to me of being like, hey, let's keep this for ourselves. Like, mm. let's, let's set these boundaries when it comes to our relationship. Let's talk about X, Y, and you can talk about you, you have your career. I have mine. I don't want to be in your world. If you want to be in mine, great. Like come back and we'll figure out how to work together on some things. But like, I just do not feel comfortable being in the public. And I was like, great. That's actually really, really healthy for me right yeah. now and still is. And I think that that's sort of the attitude that I'm going to be taking. But my advice to you is like, just keep some moments for yourself. For sure. Cause I think that's the hard part is, and you do get wrapped up in this world of like, cause you listen to people who it's are validation. like, you yes. want people to like the person that you're dating because then it validates to you that you like are in the right relationship. Exactly. And too, you kind of fall into that. Well, you're on reality TV. This is your life. You owe it to us all. Right. So then you're like, okay, crap, maybe they're right. Maybe I do owe it mm. to them. But now I'm to the point where I'm like, okay, letting the world in just ruins everything right. because it, Maybe if they hit on something you're insecure about or they, and people love to build people up just to tear them down. Correct. So that's kind of, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I just shocked the shit out of people and like, I'm just married one day and I'm like, here you go. Do it. <laughs> I, yes. That is the attitude you need to have is like, fuck everyone here. I'm going to go like date for whatever. I got engaged after like seven months. Okay. So like, yeah. Was- so when that happened, were you like. Did you know what was happening? Oh, no. I don't even, I haven't really talked to much about the engagement. Um, but I had no, I had no clue. I had, we had had conversations okay. very, very early on that like, I was like, this is it. Like, this is sort of a no brainer. Like our connection is insane. Yeah. I'm like, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And, you know, I think he also had some hesitations where he was like, I don't know if he's quite ready yet. Mm -hmm. But like, also I was telling him like, yes, I am. And he, he trusted me. Um, and yeah. And then he proposed and it was a magical, incredible moment. I love that. His heart was beating. It was intense and, and was great. It felt so right. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So obviously you are getting married, all those things. Have you spoken about kids? We have. Okay. Yeah. And what are your viewpoints on that? Well, I would, I would say this, the main three things that held me back from coming out were my sports, my, um, oh gosh. So my sports, my faith and me wanting to be a dad. Those Mm -hmm. were like the three concerns that I had of coming out. So I've really educated myself and there's not a ton of information out there for same sex couples to have access to for fertility. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've definitely discussed it and we're coming up with it. And it's something that I'm, I would be willing to discuss openly to the public. Like that would let those people into my life of that journey, just because there's so limited, um, knowledge and knowledge out there for same sex couples and how it works. And, Oh gosh. It was crazy. Lance was literally walking me through the process and was like, Savannah, like you literally get a book, uh, like all about someone and like everyone from like their great, great grandparents. And he was like, it's the craziest, most amazing thing ever. 
Yeah. It's also really intense. Yeah. And nobody wants to talk about that either. And no. I get why, um, you know, you're choosing for men, us men, you're choosing from 20 to 26, like, cause that's the healthy prime egg donation. Oh, women. Don't, don't I know. Do I know. I'm sorry. That's what the doctor says. I don't believe that. I don't <laughs> no, believe it that. Is so. That's why like, I'm like, about but when they to told us that, I was like, wait, we have to choose our biological DNA based off of a 21, 22, 23 year old resume. Like, yeah. They're in college. Yeah, it's crazy though, but that's so true. Like, yeah. I'm literally about to get my eggs frozen because I'm like, I would rather have like 25 year old eggs than 30 year old eggs. Like, that's literally what a doctor told me. They're like, yeah. by the time you're 30, your fertility oh. decreases by half. They're so nonchalant about it too. The, they, really? they, just, they just talk like statistics and numbers, and you're just like, yeah. Um, and this like, is a human being and a baby that I want to have. Like, what? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, so you both are on the same page of wanting kids. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I love that. I think he's going to be, he's going to be an incredible, incredible dad. That is awesome. And I have faith in myself too. You're going to be freaking awesome. I want to be like a, the, you know, a fun dad. I want to be you able to. You want to be like the fun, young, hot dad. Yeah, a DILF. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Hey, we all love a good wanna, DILF. Yeah, I want to be a DILF. Just saying. <laughs> uh, that is awesome though. Yeah. It's so cool though to see, like you are a completely different person. Yeah. Now. Than you were when I first met you. Totally. I've been through some shit. Yeah. <laughs> like sure. you just seem like just so much calmer and happier and not yeah. so like uptight, you know? Well, I don't have a secret that I'm holding on to anymore. And that <laughs> was a big, big secret. I always like, even that night, I re like I would never get drunk because I was so afraid if I got drunk, I would come out. So like there were so many compartments that I had to like wow. That is my so life. true. Because I didn't want like, I didn't want to you know, get wasted and then go back up to the room. And then you're just like, so what's the deal? And I'm like nonchalant be like, am eh, I'm, I'm gay, you know, like yeah. not that that would ever happen, but I feared that it would. Oh my gosh. No. Okay. I so mean, with I, you two, we'd get to just be like girl chat. And yeah. Literally. Like, hang in there. Okay. Colton, I, I've got to try to find this video because it oh, actually no. like popped up on my Snapchat not long ago and I saved it. And it's a video of you and I from that night. And oh, the, the best part now, looking at it, we're both like strutting down the hallway. And I'm like, how did we not know he was gay then? <laughs> well, these are great memories. It is the funniest, greatest video. I just have to like, oh, gosh. if I can find it, it will be hilarious. Because I remember saving it. <laughs> It is. You say you sent it to Emily immediately, and you were just like, "Told you, told you." Look, he skipped down the halls of the MGM. What's even funnier though is I call my husband, and I'm like, "I just had the best night of my life," and he doesn't like him. She must be crazy. Like she. Is yeah. We hung at the blackjack table, and I remember Emily was like, "She's at some party," and I was like, "Cool." And then, like, and then I was like, Emily, "I'm like this blackjack dealer's hot." Like, we had the best night of our whole life. Like we had so much fun. Yeah, it was We great. had so much fun. Y'all, I have to find this. Because I just saved it just like the other day because it popped up. It I was. Recently saved it. Yeah. I don't have the starting one, but I have, like, they always pop. For some reason, we were just, we were just our phones the entire night. Like, oh, I guess. Well, do you have I guess so. Made you take a hand? No. Remember, Emily took a picture of him that night. Well, yes. Yes. Yes, that was on yes. this time. Yeah, because I was so paranoid of being on the red carpet with, yes. with your family at all. But we sat together at the show, yes, and there was like some together. cuts of like when they broadcasted it, yeah. of, like so quick passes. Back after after. We did. Yeah, I we I I went back out after all the media press were gone. Something. Like that. Yeah. yeah. We took some pictures. We gotta find all these and add. Oh I, yeah, they're gonna make you, for good. Okay, camera roll. It may be on all, this uh, one. I want to say too, like I had some like questionable boot choices at that time that you could have been like, yo, he's for yo, sure. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> he's for sure. Yeah, I was, love you. I was really leaning into like just exploring all my fashion choices. At okay. That. I'm going to find this video and we're going to put it in because it's hilarious. We're both like strutting down wait. the hall. Yeah. Cause what? It was a Florida Georgia line concert. No, it was like everybody. It was everyone. It was everybody. It was the CMA Awards, so there was like... ACM Awards. No, no, no yeah. the ACM Awards, but then we went to the party the night before or yeah. after... Yes. Encore at the Beach Club. Yes, at the Beach Club. Yes. Yes. The beach club. Like, yes. Singing and, and too, let me just tell you, it was real awkward because there was also a country music artist that was real big time back then that I was also talking to, oh. so we're like, there is... I'm concert. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've, I messed that one up for you. 
Why? Because I went. You know how like crazy that's this right. world. You really didn't. Because that's Chris, how it went Chris home, Lane. Yeah. We ran into Chris Lane too. Yes. And now he's dating a bachelor. I was like, it's like full circle. Our I whole know. world is so incestual. It is. Well, they're married now and have like two kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they seem super happy. I know. It's yeah. like she never talks about her bachelor experience. Ever. A lot of people don't. Yeah. You know, but it's also, just. I have respect for people because I will say. It pisses me off to see these people go on these dating shows and, like, get the same amount of followers that I've worked for 10 years for in a matter of, like, five minutes. Yeah. I'm like, you didn't even have to work for that shit. I know. So it's, like, be grateful it's, for a platform that got you that. Totally. Totally. It's uh, it's definitely a hand that bit, but don't bite the hand that feeds you. But yes. at the same time, I will say, I'll combat you just there is, like... There is a lot of, for the a lot of the leads, there's a lot of things that, like, just are, are hard to deal with. Yeah. It's hard to process. You do not have the support. Like, coming off of the show, and maybe this will be my next thing after athletes, like, I think there should be a writer uh, attached to every unscripted TV agreement for a year's worth of therapy. Mm. Because yes. a lot of these reality TV stars, these production companies, these networks, these streamers come in and fuck your life up. And sometimes your life up in the best way. Yeah. But then they just sort of throw you to the wolves and are like, learn, go hire a publicist, go hire a manager. You sign to an agency. And also you're dealing with people coming at you on social media, being in the headlines, having paparazzi outside of your house when something goes wrong in your life. And there's like, what do you, it's not supposed to pick up the phone and call an executive producer. They don't have the best interest in for you. You Trust have me, to. That's the last thing they want to deal with. I had a crazy stalker situation. When I tell you crazy, like he had a rap sheet a mile long, had abused women, had yeah. like, it was bad. And he, you know, he had raped someone, but he was out of prison. It was really interesting. And he's like writing me letters front and back, mm. then gets out and starts texting me, calling me. He's coming to get me, all these things. Ugh. And I'm like, if it wasn't for the show, I wouldn't have this. Like, right. you guys need to have security until yeah. we figure out what the heck's going on with that. But the moment it starts costing them money, they don't want to help you. Right. And it's right. like, you are benefiting from me. You're making money off of me. So at least help me in my mental health. Totally. You have to take care. You're not going to, and that's what I, I said. I was like, you, I said so that to somebody in the show. I don't know who it was. I was like, you're not going to have a show in a few years if nobody is there, like, it, because they're battling depression, anxiety, and they keep having these, this tension with your yeah. company. So I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a, I think that's a great thing though, to bring into cool. it because mental health, as you know, is a real thing. I struggle with it ever. Like having the world coming at you yeah. is so difficult. And these shows should be like production companies, networks should be held accountable. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't remember exactly the dollar figure, but I was like, you know, they don't pay the leads a whole ton. I'm, I think it's public information by this time, but like the networks make a lot of money off of those shows. Oh yeah. You make a couple millions. hundred thousand dollars and they're making millions of dollars. Yes. And then it's just, you know, um, on to the next. And then they sort of get butt hurt if you go with another network or you're on doing another project that's not incorporated with them. And it's like, I don't know. I just think it's healthier that we went our separate ways. I yeah. think, you know, that's just, that's life and that's business, right? For Not sure. all relationships are meant to, meant to last. And, um, you know, I'm, was not the first, will not be the last. There's going to be more people thrown into that machine and spit out. And I wish them all the best and yeah. I want them to all get good therapists. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Okay. So the one question I want to end on that I love asking people is what do you want to be remembered for? Oh gosh. I think I want to be remembered for something that hasn't yet happened in my life. I just want like something. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's still more that I can give, um, more experiences that I can go through. I, I feel like something about me being a father and a good dad and hopefully raising good human beings into this world, mm -hmm. um, should be my legacy more than any like, memes or awards or tv shows or contracts i just want to like i want to put good, good human beings in on this earth because i think we need more of them <laughs> i love that and yeah. see and that's how you know you're supposed to be a dad yeah with that being your response yeah i and i yeah i can't i can't wait I so. love that. Well, thank if you. If I can get pregnant right now, I would I would get pregnant. <laughs> like I want to be pregnant right. I now. could see it. I, I know. It. But it can't happen. Those women who carry for us gay men are saints. Yes. And 
incredible. And I cannot say thank you enough to all of the surrogates out there. That's amazing. I love yeah. that. Well, thank you for taking the time to do that. Thanks for having me on. And this is lovely. I'm so happy we got to like. Do you have room for another gay bestie? Because I, oh, I do. Right. I've got cool. room for him. Awesome. Come on. Love it. <laughs>